Today we are discussing about lipid rafts. Lipid rafts are microdomains. Microdomains present in the plasma membrane. In the plasma membrane, composed of sphingolipids. cholesterol and kevolin protein lipid rafts are also present on endoplasmic reticulum golgi apparatus and lysosomes Now taking the structure in a plasma membrane, say this is a plasma membrane which is composed of lipid bilayer and associated proteins. Now say this is a general structure, you know it's having a fluidity, but in certain regions, in certain restricted regions, plasma membrane do not show the fluidity. Like if you take this region, this region is known as a lipid raft. This lipid raft is made up of sphingolipids, which is elongated phospholipids, associated with the cholesterol. This cholesterol makes the hydrophobic interaction with the sphingolipids and it's mainly having the saturated fatty acids. If we take a sphingolipid here, it is mainly composed of saturated fatty acids. These saturated fatty acids have a carbon-carbon single bond. Due to this, the structure is more compact. First thing, it's having the saturated fatty acids. Second thing, it's having the elongated genes. That means that this makes it more compact and the cholesterol is present in between it makes it more thick structure. Due to this thickness and due to this compactness, this region in the plasma membrane do not have fluidity. We call these regions as a lipid rafts. Lipid rafts are also composed of a covalent protein. This covalent protein, it is actually, if you take a covalent protein, it is actually an integrated protein integrated protein that means it remains associated with the lipid rafts or phospholipids here so it is an integral protein it is an association with it very compact structure it is it doesn't have any fluidity so this covalent protein here it remains associated with the phospholipids here so as to this structure become more compact and there will be a negligible fluidity present here so that this lipid molecule, this lipid portion or this phospholipid portion or this lipid raft moves inside the lipid bilayer but this compact structure as a whole moves in the lipid bilayer and rest of the phospholipids they show a normal movement. Now next thing we have, if you take this covalent protein, this covalent protein it is mainly responsible for covalent dependent, covalent dependent endocytosis so it is helping in the process of endocytosis that endocytosis here is not energy dependent but is a protein dependent that protein is known as a covalent protein so we study it in a detail in a transport topic again a transport we will discuss it tomorrow again and next chapter we will discuss that is a transportation but this covalent protein if it is involved in an endocytosis, then we can call it as a covalent dependent endocytosis. One more important thing in case of an animal cell, it is an animal cell because cholesterol is here present here, so we are discussing about the animal cell. Next thing we have, these lipid rafts, they are rich in the receptors. We call that one as a cell surface receptors. So they are rich in the receptors, and these receptors are actually receiving the signal from to the external environment then they bring the signal inside the cell and this cell is showing the genes with respect to the signal so i have to give response to that signal simply we can say if the external environment is providing any kind of stimulus this stimulus is received by the receptor then this receptor takes this signal within the cell 
and this cell shows the response to that signal by showing many changes within the cell by showing by performing different activities to show the response to that signal so we can simply say repeated acts are rich in receptor cell surface receptor which receive the signal to the external environment then bring it to the within the cell and this cell shows the activities very much to that stimulus one more important thing we have here about this that is if we take this uh, lipid raft this lipid raft is also the site it is a site for entry of it is a site for entry of bacteria and virus ये भी हम बाद में देखेंगे इसको इंडोसाइटोसिस में जब हम इसको डिटेल में ले लेंगे सो इट्स आल्सो द साइट फॉर एंट्री ऑफ बैक्टीरिया एंड वायरस दीज लिपिड ड्राफ्ट्स वन मोर थिंग वी हैव वी हैव सर्टेन लिपिड लिपिड ड्राफ्ट्स व्हिच डू नॉट हैव दिस कैवलिन प्रोटीन व्हाट वी कॉल दीज लिपिड ड्राफ्ट्स इफ इफ कैवलिन प्रोटीन इज एब्सेंट इन अ लिपिड ड्राफ्ट वी कॉल इट एज अ प्लेनर लिपिड ड्राफ्ट if it is present then we can call it as kevlin lipid raft or we can also call it as a non kevlin lipid raft so these lipid rafts they mainly perform the various functions like the first one is some get cell surface receptor which receive the external signal bring it to the cell second thing is the site for entry of bacteria and virus these lipid rafts they show the movement within the lipid bilayer they are as a whole molecule showing the movement inside the lipid bilayer now next thing we have here we we'll discuss it in detail when we we'll go for the transport we will see how this kevlin helps in the process of endocytosis actually these kevlin dependent particle this kevlin dependent endocytosis so we can say these lipid rafts are mainly seen in case of the neurons why they bring the signals from external environment towards the internal environment so it's mainly helping in a signal transduction induction we will see it in a later chapter now next thing we have here is we have to discuss that is about lipid droplets next thing we have is a lipid droplet these lipid droplets they are actually the stored lipids which are seen in case of adipocyte so this adipocyte is a connective tissue actually acting as or which is a fat storing tissue so this adipocyte in an adipocyte we have presence of a lipid droplets actually it's a stored lipid here so these are the lipid droplets which you will see in case of the adipocyte say if we will take a structure here so this is a adipocyte and it's a fat storing cell and these we all have is a lipid droplets so lipid droplets are actually stored inside the stored in adipocytes stored in adipocytes the mainly consists of in lipid droplets ke andar kya hota hai the mainly consists of like we have triglycerides the stored form of the lipid there is a triglycerides and cholesterol ester so these are the stored form of the lipids which are seen in case of a lipid droplet so lipid droplets simply you have to keep in mind these are present inside the adipocyte for adipocyte is a fat storing cell or it is acting as a connective tissue as well now these lipid droplets they have a neutral form of lipids which are stored here the lipids which are mainly stored inside the lipid droplets are the 
triglycerides and we have a cholesterol ester which are mainly stored inside the adipose sites. Next topic we have phospholipids. Next one we have Next one we have is that various structures of phospholipids. The first one we have is a mycelium or mycelial structure. Now, if we take a mycelium, it is simply consisting of it is consisting of single fatty acid chain. It is consisting of single fatty acid chain. Say, for instance, if this is a high polar and this is a chain, now it is consisting of a single fatty acid chain. So, this is a single fatty acid chain here. If you see a single fatty acid chain as set with a phosphate head or a polar head, then you can call this one as a mycelium or mycelial structure. How this mycelial structure is formed in an aqueous medium? See, if we have an aqueous medium, if we have a cell within the cytoplasm, how this mycelial structure is formed? So this may be the head here and this is a tail. This is a head, this is a tail here. Head and a tail. Head and a tail. So this is here a head and a tail. This is head and tail. This is here head and tail. This is a head and tail. Head and tail. Head and tail. This is a head and tail. So this structure, which is formed here, is a mycelial structure. So this we call as a mycelial structure. This is formed here. We call this one as a mycelium. You see, in case of the phospholipids, this mycelium structure is mainly formed by a single fatty acid chain which have associated polar head. Now, externally, there is a presence of water. If we externally, there is a presence of water on the because head is a polar, so it loves to be with the water. So externally here we have a presence of water. In inner side of it there is no water. So we can call this is a hydrophobic core formed here. If the hydrophobic core center is building, here the hydrophobic core is building. So this hydrophobic core do not have water. This is the water is absent. Water is not present. So water jostle may it is located onto the head because head is having a polar, this is a polar head. So if it is polar head, so it loves to be with the water. So it is in association with the water, whereas tails are hydrophobic. So it makes a compact structure. We call this one as a hydrophobic core. This hydrophobic core do not bear the water. In general, we call it as a mycelium. Next structure, which is formed by the lipid bile here especially the lipids in a, in a cell or within cell that is known as a liposome the next structure which is formed here that is known as a liposome this liposome it is a spherical structure it is a spherical structure Consists of lipid bile here. is can lipid bile here. Let's see if I'm making a structure here, say this will be the one layer, this will be the another layer. And this is spherical structure, and we have a presence of phospholipids, say this had it a tail, had it a tail, had it a tail, had it a tail, had it a tail. And if I am making on certain region, not in all region, all is on the same, but I am making on restricted region, this is a head and a tail, head and a tail, head and a tail, head tails, head 
So if you will see, this type of structure you have, the spherical, this is known as the liposome. This liposome, it is mainly involved in, it is mainly involved in delivery of, delivery of drugs or pharmaceutical drugs, you can also call it, pharmaceutical drugs, comma, nucleic acids, or you can also call lipids, into the cell. You mostly have used karte in liposomes, spherical structures, hai. we mainly use them for delivery of drugs, or nucleic acids or lipids into the cell. If the cell can be put in the cell, like you have to put a drug or a nucleic acid or a lipid, then you can use it for what you can use. We can use the liposome. Now, how can you make this? It is a simple thing. You can degenerate the plasma membrane. You can degenerate the plasma membrane by a process known as sonication. Sonication is you are using the sound energy. आप साउंड एनर्जी का इस्तेमाल करके प्लाज्मा मेम्ब्रेन को डिजेनरेट कर सकते हैं लिपिड बाइलियर को प्लाज्मा मेम्ब्रेन को डिजेनरेट किया उसके बाद दिस विल टेक अ स्ट्रक्चर दैट विल बी लाइफ अ सर्कुलर स्ट्रक्चर वी कॉल दैट वन एज ए लाइपोजोम एंड दिस लाइपोजोम कैन बी यूज्ड फॉर डिलीवरी ऑफ ड्रग्स और न्यूक्लिक एसिड्स और लिपिड्स इनटू द सेल द मोस्ट फेवरेबल स्ट्रक्चर which you can see the, the phospholipid show that is known as a lipid bilayer phospholipid bilayer this very important structure there is a phospholipid phospholipid bilayer it is a most common structure it is a most common structure seen in the case of the phospholipids, most common structure. It is cylindrical in shape. If you want to see the structure, it is cylindrical in shape. It is cylindrical in shape. It is energetically favorable. Energetically favorable. It is especially the structure which we see in case of the plasma membrane. That is a phospholipid bilayer. It is the most common structure of the phospholipids. It is cylindrical in shape and is energetically favorable structure. Like we have discussed in our previous lecture, fluid mosaic model. So this is a lipid bilayer here. Cylindrical in shape. So this is a lipid bilayer I'm making here. Hamstring proteins are set with it. This structure is the most favorable structure. Now tomorrow we will discuss about the transport through the plasma membrane.